Okay, guys. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Well, we got in the building, so here we are. Uh, what's that? Surprisingly. Surprising. Well, not too surprisingly, but uh, surprising it was locked anyway. So happy to have you guys here. Um, I know most of you, but if, I, if you don't know me, my name is Kevin Ahern, and I'm the guy that's been bugging you with emails and so forth, and so i um, happy to get this going. Uh, I want to say a little bit about just uh, what we're here for and uh, getting everything started. And we'll probably have a couple people, I'm guessing, walking in a little bit late. So I'm a person that likes to start on time, so I want to get things going. The sooner we get started, the sooner we get done. So you guys probably have a lot of things to do. Um, how's classes and everything going? Great. Midterms are coming up. Yes. Already had one. What did you have midterm in? How was it? Holy crap. Holy crap. <laughs> you, ha you had an exam in holy crap? Maybe. Okay. It's a yeah. I'm taking... Ho taking Holy crap, 101. Okay. So uh, I don't want to take too much of your time because I know that you have studying and so forth to do. Uh, so this is uh, welcome. So uh, this is uh, one of three workshops we will have this term. And the reason we have the workshops is to um, get you acquainted with um, some basic ideas with respect to being a researcher. So. Um, all of you are going to be uh, engaged in undergraduate research starting next term. And many of you, probably most of you, don't really know anything or much about that. So um, we want to help you to get uh, your feet on the ground and to get started and understand how things work. So that's part of what's here. Now, what we do in workshop er, is here to help. And you may find that if, you know, you may find workshop is a little overwhelming in some cases. Uh, and if that happens, that's fine. Uh, well, it's not fine, but um, I'm here to help you. So if there's things that you'd like to talk about outside the workshop, or questions that you have, or whatever, um, that's what I'm here. That's what Sophie's here. She's not here tonight, but that's what Sophie's here for as well. Our aim in this program is making every one of you successful. And I'm very sincere when I say we will do whatever we can to help you to be successful. We want you to uh, realize your dreams, whatever they are. Okay. And so that's a really important thing. Um, so our, our efforts are aimed at that. So if you feel there's something that you need or there's something that you want or whatever, if you don't tell us, we can't read your mind. But if you tell us, we will do whatever we can to, to help make it, make it happen. Okay? So, um, so that's the, the, the starting point for this right here. Uh, as I said, there will be three workshops. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? There are three workshops every term. Um, and for the, so for the three, uh, the, 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 that is for the winter, the fall term, the winter term, and the spring term. So they happen about every three weeks. This is the third week of classes. Uh, we'll have another one probably in week six and probably another one in week nine, maybe week eight, so we don't get too close to finals. We don't want to take too much of your study time. So we'll try to uh, adjust that for you. The ideas of the workshop are to put things in a fairly small capsule so that um, we can get through things. And the idea of the workshop is to be done in about 45 to 50 minutes. So we will work to do that. And I, I promise you, I won't keep you longer than that period of time. Okay? Um, I'm videotaping the lecture because there may be some people, I know of at least one person who's unable to be here, and I want them to have the benefits of this. The workshops, as uh, we noted in the email, are required. So we do expect that you will participate uh, in the workshops uh, because they're necessary for you to begin to understand how to be a researcher, how to understand science, engineering, and agriculture, which is the three colleges that, that, the three, that all of you are from. Okay, so that's, that's important to do. So we do expect you to be here. If you can't be here for, for whatever reason, you need to let us know in advance. Okay? And that's just part of being a responsible college student. That's really important to do. Um, we're here to help you and work with you, but if you don't communicate with us, then we can't help you, and then it becomes much harder for us to do whatever is necessary to keep you going. Okay? So please do that. Sophie, I know, has been working to get all of your pictures, and she's got almost everybody's pictures, but there still are a couple of people uh, whom she hasn't heard from. And uh, people sort of dropping off the map, unfortunately, um, may be dropping out of the program, and so we don't want to have that happen. So again, we're here <coughs> to, to do what we can to keep you going, okay? All right, um, any questions before um, I um, give you a couple other pieces of information? Hi, any other questions? No? Everybody ready to get going? 
Okay, so um, one of the things that I don't have with me on a handout uh, tonight is um, that one of the exercises that you're going through with uh, Kyle, uh, Dr. Cole right now is that he's kind of getting you acquainted to campus and sort of a, a acquainted undergraduate research as well. Um, by next term, we're going to be connecting you with a professor. Okay? And we don't expect that you're necessarily going to be an expert. In fact, you won't be an expert by next term. But we will be connecting you with a professor. And in order for us to connect you with a professor, we want to try to connect you with somebody that you want to be connected with. We can't promise that we can do that. But we want to try to connect you with somebody that you want to be connected with. So what you're going to get from Sophie and me in the next couple of days is a link to a set of um, uh, professors, that is departments and colleges, where there are professors that you can click on their link and you can read something about the research that they do. Now, the impression most people have when they look at those is, whoa, this is just over the top. This is too complicated, et cetera. Okay? We're not expecting you to memorize anything. It's not a test. We want you to read through and look at the professors that are there and say, see if there's something that interests you. So engineers, I would recommend you look in the College of Engineering, which we'll have on the link for you. And the science students probably will be looking in the College of Science and maybe some related things. And the College of Ag will be looking at similar things as well. But if you read through those, you'll get some um, ideas of, wow, this person's working on vaccines. I'm really interested in vaccines. Or maybe this person is, is interested in building a solar car, and I really want to work on something like that. So that's the kind of thing that's there. Okay? So what we'll be asking you to do is probably by the next workshop that we have, which will be in about three weeks, we want you to have some ideas of professors whose research looks interesting to you. Okay? And we'll say more about that as we get closer to it. That makes sense? So you should be getting an email from Sophie and me sometime in the next day or two with that information. And again, if you want to sit down with us and look at it with, you know, we can explain things to you, we'd be happy to do that as well. So that's, that's important. Okay. So uh, first, I want to get a list of who all is here tonight. So on the back of this sheet I'm passing around, would you just sign? Or, uh, don't sign your name, because I can't read your writing. Please print your name, OK? And if you would put on your, your uh, if you know your student ID number, put that on there also, because that'll help us if we can't read your writing, OK? And as that's going around, um, uh, if you know your name, yeah. I mean, if, you know your, if you know your name, definitely. But if you know your ID, yes, uh, that'd be great. Um, are, so w w this invitation to attend this is open to a lot of people. So are there people here who are not in the STEM Leaders Program? Everybody's in the STEM Leaders Program? Okay. Because we do let other people come to our workshops, and we expect we'll have some of those people. So um, what I have is, a, is a what we're going to be working on tonight. So let me pass uh, these out to you. Okay, just pass that back. And if you'll pass that back, that would be great. All right. That's why I get to look down on you guys. Now, as you're getting this handout that's going around, um, it has some fairly basic information. And we start these workshops at a very simple level. Um, but what people find is that what they think about what science is isn't something that they automatically know. If I said to you, without looking at the sheet, what is science, what would you say? Anybody? What's science? Yeah. Study of something. Oh, that's very good, actually. Very good. OK. Study of something. What, how else would you describe science? The study of the truth. The study of the truth. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I like this. OK. You guys are going to be a good class. What do you got? White lab coats. We think of that. We think of the lab jackets, right? Okay. Very common thing. Yeah. Back to the back. Research and development. So, okay. Oh, did you, everybody hear that? Unbiased. It's a very important consideration of science. Sound science. Yes. Okay. So, science is really a way of explaining things. That's at its fundamental roots what science is and why science exists. It's to explain things. And in explaining things, welcome. Ha have a handout here. And in explaining things, 
Everybody get one? Everybody get a hand up? OK. We explain things not so that we have more things to learn to memorize, but so that we can improve our lives. So if we can explain how Ebola spreads, we know a way to stop Ebola, right? If we can explain um, how um, a better way would be to make a solar cell, then we can make better solar cells and make better electricity, right? So that explanation is part of it. And so the research and development that was there is really a way of uncovering, and somebody said truth, it's a way of uncovering the truth because the truth is ultimately the, the, what we're, we're after getting. The unbiased nature of science is really, really important okay? because bias throws us off. When we're biased about something, I'm sure you, you know people who are biased, they're not much fun to talk to. And if you have a bias that keeps you from the truth, I can guarantee you, you don't want it. Let's imagine, for example, that you are getting on an airplane to fly somewhere, and someone looks at it and says, that plane has got trouble. Okay? And there's a person who has a vested interest in that plane getting to wherever it's going, no matter what, and they say, oh, no, it's fine. They've got a bias. Right? Their interest is in the plane flying, not in the safety of the people who are flying on it. Right? So bias can have some very uh, big consequences. If that plane crashes, the bias was one of the reasons that it stopped from getting fixed. Okay? So we have to think about bias as we're uh, doing everything that we do. All right? Now, um, so that's very important uh, to do. I, I have on here on the sheet that I handed to you um, a, a thing I pulled out of Wikipedia that I liked. Okay? It says, the scientific method, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is a body of techniques for investigating phenomena, acquiring new knowledge, and that's what research is all about, or correcting and integrating previous knowledge. Okay? As a researcher, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be finding new knowledge. And I'm not making that up. Most students kind of go, oh, yeah, sure. You are. You're going to find new knowledge in the research that you do. And that's one of the really exciting things about undergraduate research. Okay? To be termed scientific, a method of inquiry, okay, a method of inquiry means the way that you're investigating the problem, right? Must be based on empirical and measurable evidence. That measurable evidence is really very fundamental to science. We can't do science by how we feel about something. We can't do science based on, well, that's what I think it is. <laughs> You're, you're ahead of the game there. We're, we're kind, of, kind of science. Well, not quite, but, but you're on the right track. Okay, So I, I actually explained that, and we're going to work on that on how we develop an idea tonight. That's, that's, that's actually the exercise we're going to do. Okay. All right. Um, so science is rooted in being unbiased. Science is rooted in finding the truth. Science is rooted in, and this is the most important thing, asking questions. Asking questions, OK? So I'm going to take you through an exercise. And then I'm gonna, we're going to look through this a little bit more closely. So I'm going to take you through an exercise I like to take students through to sort of illustrate to you the scientific method in something that you might know very, very readily, OK? Let's imagine, if you will, that you're in your backyard and you see a hummingbird. And you watch this hummingbird, and the first part of science is actually observation. Okay? Watching something and wondering about it. So that asking a question part is very, very critical to this. Wondering, I wonder what that is doing. Well, you see this hummingbird. Every time you look out there, the hummingbird is in the same part of the yard. It's always in the back corner of the yard. Right? And so you say, gee, I wonder why the hummingbird is in the back part of the yard. Right? And you look, and then later there's another hummingbird, and it's in the back part of the yard. And so you're watching, and you're thinking, that's kind of curious. I don't have any, any understanding for why it's back there. I wonder why it's back there. That starts the scientific process. You've observed it. You're curious about it. And you wonder. That's how Newton discovered gravity. Newton is sitting under the tree 
not even thinking about anything, and an apple falls, and he thought, geez, I never thought about this before. Why in the hell do apples fall? Nobody knew what gravity was. It was the 1600s. Nobody knew what gravity was. But Newton's sitting there and thinking, nobody's ever thought about this before. Why in the hell does the apple fall? This is something that's kind of an interesting thing for me to think about. And so Newton developed his laws of gravity as a result of his curiosity in why the apple fell. A very simple thing, right? The hummingbirds in your backyard. You make some observations, and the more you watch the damn thing, it's there flying all the time, right? OK, so now you're curious. You have an idea. The first thing that we do as human beings is we try to explain something, right? This is what you want to do. You want to explain it, right? Why is the hummingbird? I want you. I want you to tell me why is the hummingbird back there? Um, the way you can look at the gravity, maybe their diminishing things based on flowers. Okay. So maybe there's some flowers back there. All right. So I'll tell you there are some flowers back there. Okay. So there's some flowers back in the backyard, and so you've seen these, and you say, okay, the hummingbird is flying around because. There's flowers back there. Why would a hummingbird be flying around flowers, guys? He's hungry, and there's nectar in the flowers, right? There's some knowledge that you have. You know hummingbirds will get nectar from flowers, right? So now you've used your knowledge and your observation to put together an explanation. Understand? Is it true? That's where science comes in. We haven't done science yet. We're in the process of the scientific method. All right? So we've got the flowers there. That gives us what we call a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an explanation of a phenomenon. So I'd like somebody to tell me the explanation of this phenomenon. Who wants to do it? Nobody wants to do it. Don't look at me, please. OK, so she says the hummingbirds are in the corner of the garden due to the fact that there are flowers there. Right? Everybody with me? OK, that's the hypothesis. She just made a hypothesis. We're getting further into the scientific method. We've observed. We've synthesized, our, put our, our knowledge together with the observation that there's flowers there. And now we're explaining it with the fact that the flowers are the cause of the hummingbird there. All right. The next step in the scientific process says, if that is true, and I forget your name, Aubrey. Aubrey. If what Aubrey said is true, all right, then something else should be true. Anybody ever think of a way we can ask that question, Aubrey? Um, if you move the flowers, then they'll start going to the same place. Okay. So did everybody hear that? If you move the flowers, the hummingbirds will follow the flowers. Right? So what she's given right, is a way to test the hypothesis. She's got a way to test the hypothesis. All right? So imagine that she says, all right, I'm going to uproot those flowers. I'm going to move them to the front part of the yard. And I'm going to watch and see what the hummingbirds do. There's two possibilities, right? The hummingbirds follow the flowers or the hummingbirds don't follow the flowers. You sit and you observe, and you count the number of times you see the hummingbird with the flowers, and the humming, the count the number of times you see the hummingbird in the back of the yard with no flowers. Right? What you've done is you've just collected data. You've just collected data. Because you have x number of times it's up here, you have x number of times it's back there, and you ask the question, all right? Has the moving of the flowers affected where the hummingbird is? Anybody with me? There's something missing here. Everybody know what's missing? What's that? Well, what you think is going to happen is that the hummingbird's going to move, right? So you think that's going to happen. How am I going to answer the question that the flowers affected it? <coughs> By what? Analyzing the data. Analyzing the data, okay. So what am I going to compare the data to to analyze it? Control. A control. All right. 
So what's the control? So everybody know what a control is? What's a control? Yeah. OK. So you're very much on the right track. So the control is where we haven't altered anything. All right. So what we would need to do to do this experiment would be before we move the flowers, we count the number of times we see the hummingbird by the flowers, and we count the number of times we see the hummingbird up here not by the flowers. Right? We might see it once or twice up here. We might see it 50 times back here. Right? And then when we move the flowers, we ask the question, how many times do we see it up here, and how many times do we see it back there? Let's imagine that we move the flowers, and now we see the hummingbird up here 20 times, and we still see it back in the back 30 times. Yeah? It's not that it's kind of like if you see how you're there, it's like how it's kind of Hasn't it adjusted its mindset? Mm -hmm. OK, that's one explanation. So what she's done is she's modified the hypothesis, right? And what she's done is if it had gone 50 times up here and it's not back there anymore, you would say, well, probably it's just following the flowers, right? But it's not doing that. It's still back there. So an alternative explanation is that the hummingbird is still looking for the flowers back here, right? Is that the explanation? So maybe there's something else back there. Maybe there's another reason. Maybe there's a boy hummingbird back there. <laughs> OK. So what do these things bring to mind? They're variables. They bring to mind new tests, right? Let's, let's, let's go with yours first, OK? So she says, if the, the hummingbird hasn't got its mind around this yet, then what would you predict would happen over time? So you will see increasing numbers where the flowers are and decreasing numbers where the flowers have left. Everybody agree? You see what we're doing? We're testing the hypothesis. We're testing the new hypothesis. And we're asking the question, is it, is it making a difference? Let's say it doesn't make a difference. The hummingbird doesn't change its pattern. We still see about 30 back in the back and about 20 up here in the front. Okay? You said there's something else back there. Right? Okay? So I, may, I was silly saying there's a boy hummingbird back there. What else might be back there? Family, OK. What else? Nest, OK. Family, nest, OK. There you go. Coverage, OK. And coverage brings to mind something else. What else do you think about? What's that? Cats. Right? In the backyard, the most common predator you're going to have of a bird is going to be a cat. OK. Now, what does the cat make you think? How are you going to test the cat theory? Or the cat hypothesis, I should say. What's that? OK, so that may be hard to do if it's, I mean, if it's just your cat. But there might be other neighborhood cats, right? So that may be hard to do. So how would you set up an experiment to collect that data? What kind of data would you collect? Yeah. Oh, put a cat in a place and see if the bird avoids that, right? That will definitely give you some idea about whether or not the cat is a factor, right? Everybody understand? You get the idea how we answer questions? The beauty of this is you go through a sequential iterative process, and you finally get to a place where the most logical thing now is the final hypothesis that you have. That's how science is done. Now, it's a very simple exercise, but it's exactly what we do when we're working in a laboratory. The thing people confuse with working in a laboratory is the lab jacket, the test tubes, the goggles, and so forth. But all of those are there doing the same thing that we're doing with that little mind experiment that we're messing with with the cat in the backyard. OK? All right. So let's go through the sheet. And I've got a couple of exercises. And then I promise I will turn you loose. How's that? 
So um, let's go through um, what is basically the um, uh, third paragraph. So I, I'm going to read this through with you because uh, that is what I've just already talked to you about. The scientific method typically begins with an observation. After observing a phenomenon for a period of time, one typically has a question to be answered. Why is the hummingbird where it is? Oftentimes, coinciding with the question is an explanation to answer the question. The hummingbird likes the flowers. Right? This is the hypothesis. Hypotheses lead to speculations of what would happen if they are true. These are predictions. Okay? So predictions lead to tests to see if they are true. So you predict that if you move the flowers, the hummingbird will follow. All right? And so the test then was moving the, hummingbird, uh, moving the flowers to see if the hummingbird follows. We think of these tests as experiments. Testing predictions generates data, how many times we see the hummingbird in one place versus the other, which must be analyzed, and this is compared to one what one would expect from the hypothesis. If the data is consistent with the hypothesis, the hypothesis is on its way to being validated. If it is inconsistent, then an alternative hypothesis needs to be tested. Now, the example that we had here illustrated a very important principle that's not described on here, and that was of what a control is. Every experiment has some type of a control in it. And a control is there because we want this to be unbiased. The control is there to, pre to, to reduce the bias that we have in an experiment. All right? Let's imagine we didn't have a control in this experiment that I just described to you. Let's imagine that we move the flowers and we see, wow, the hummingbird's up here 20 times. Okay? It was, you know, that, that hummingbird's here 20 times. That's a lot. It must be the flowers. Right? Because we're picking the data that we want that's consistent with what we're trying to see. All right? I bring the flowers up here. I see the hummingbird here. That must be the answer. Bingo. The control tells us that it's a comparison. What if we move the flowers and the numbers don't change? It starts out with two up here and 50 back there, right? And we move the flowers, and we still see 50 back there and two up here. What would that tell us? What's that? It's not the flowers, right? Most likely, it's not the flowers. Could it still be the flowers? Maybe I have a cat painted on the side of my house, right? Maybe I have a video screen that has a cat out there, right? Any number of things. But but you're right. Very likely, the uh, flowers were not the cause. So I have to think of another hypothesis. Everybody with me? OK. So that's what we're going to do. I've got an exercise uh, for you tonight. And I've given you three scenarios. What I would like you to do would be to break up into groups of about six each. OK? And that may, might, let's say every two rows. So these two rows, those 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 two rows. OK? I want you to. Address the three scenarios at the bottom in the same way we just addressed the hummingbirds. So the three scenarios are, first, the most popular students write skateboards is an observation that you make. Okay? The second is that there are more honey honeybee stings near the Memorial Union than any other place on campus. And the third is that pop quizzes are given more frequently on Fridays than on any other day of the week. Okay? Um, Let's spend about five minutes on each one, OK? So what I want you to do is to start out, and somebody in the, each group can record this and say, what is the observation? What is the hy hypothesis, et cetera? All right. I would promise I'd get you out of here to reasonable hours, so I want to try to do that. Um, you've had a chance to talk through these. What I would like to very briefly do would be to go through uh, the groups and talk about what you um, discussed. So I'm going to ask this group and this group to talk about one, that group and that group to talk about number two, and that group and that group to talk about number three. OK? So very briefly, what did you guys come up with on number one? OK, the most popular students have right skateboards because they have places to go. That's your hypothesis, right? All right? Break their legs and see if they. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just probably like sit on a bench or something. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know, people watch. I don't know. Yeah, like we could come up with like a table, like yeah. a, some kind of table like, where we would ask like a few people and then say like how 
how many pages you have to get to know. Okay. So because they're going more places, and they're connecting so with they're more people, people and they're more popular? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, okay. What kind of data would you get with that? The number of places they go to. Okay. And compare them. And compare them. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you guys? What'd you come up with? We got um, if we take away the popular tip skateboard, will the still the students still be considered popular? Okay, that's a good idea. How will you how will you uh, determine that? Oh. And then for our experiment, we would take away those skateboards and see if they still talk to the same. See if their Facebook people. likes go down. Yeah. <laughs> and then if that didn't work, we would give the skate give the unpopular kids a skateboard and see if the amount of people they talk to goes up. If they're not used to skateboarding, you can laugh at them when they fall <laughs> off of it, then, right? Okay, good, good. I like that. Okay, n this group back here, number question number two. Okay. 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 Maybe there's more perfume near the Memorial Union. Right? Okay. How about this over here? More people. So how are you going to do the experiment then? What are you going to do? Um, I think we would like stop. We would like students who are near the school to go to four events and then like um, count how many people there are at each place, like per event, and then how many, like what percentage of those people get counted. And then we would like just count them, just like half the people. Okay. So it's going to be kind of, it's going to be tough because you're going to have to have density of people around the Memorial Union, right? Okay. That's not, the reason I ask you the question isn't to trip you up because I, I like people to think about what the experiment would be. Because that's important when you're designing an experiment is thinking you have to design something that's, that, that's doable and that's testable. Okay. All right. Let's mix it up. Number three back in the corner. What do you guys got? Oh, okay, good. And how are you going to test that? Okay, so if we go over a day so that we can share Friday to see if the other days are doing the same. Okay. So what we would do is we would um, get the roster of all the kids, of all the classes that are offered on campus. So we're going to turn grades off to the left, then classes, so to the classes, and record what um, they like to take that day off, and then just tally that up and compare them to see if Fridays are more popular. So your experiment would largely tell you if the observation is valid, right? Okay. So um, that's getting there, but it's not quite there because it doesn't answer the question about why the things are done, right? Why are there more quizzes on Friday? That's what we're after. But uh, good, good thoughts. How about over here? So same thing with all the students on the material Monday to Thursday, so it's going to be on Friday. It's that we'll talk to all the students and say, talk to us about Friday, and we take half class and talk to us about Friday. Or when we do a Monday to Thursday show, and we take another set of classes, we have them on the material from Wednesday to Monday. And we give all four shows up on Tuesday and give like a maybe double point of material. Okay, so you guys had similar thoughts back here. And this is a tough one. This was the hardest one of the three because it's difficult to test. It's very, and, and in fact, I'm very impressed with the fact that you guys went with the observations and then you designed a test to uh, see if, the ob see if uh, your explanation of the observation was true. The last question has sort of built into it, is that really true? And so both of you in the back looked at that and said, I want to find out if there are more quizzes given on Friday. Okay? So it's very common to have that happen. Let's imagine that the, that was established. Okay? So I'm going to give you just a thought for a moment. And I'm going to ask you what the hypothesis would be for why that's the case. Why? Are there more quizzes given on Friday? Because people, don't because people so you think professors do it because people are unprepared? That's fine. That's a, that's a hypothesis. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, what do you have? Okay. 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 Other right, other thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of getting at it right here. I'll tell you why I tend to give more quizzes on Friday, pop quizzes on Friday. You know why? People don't show up, and so I can tell pretty quickly who's showing up and reward those who are coming, because those who are coming get points. Those who are not coming don't get points. Yeah. So then you could like take attendance um, for like a month without giving quizzes on Friday and see mm -hmm. how many people show up on Friday. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a quiz and people know that they need to take the quiz, then yeah. you Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, guys. So this illustrates some very, with some very simple principles how the scientific method can actually enter our lives. Okay? You can actually answer questions with a properly designed experiment, and that's pretty cool. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you for coming tonight. Please, as I said, stay in touch. And if you have any questions at all, please let us know, okay? <laughs>